Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Tory Jackson. Not as uh, good at this as the first two were. Uh, I I hate speaking in uh, public places. Uh, public places um, crazy because my job requires it now as of late. Um, so you'll hear me say um a lot. You'll hear me say you know. Uh, so you're definitely gonna hear me say that a ton of times. Um, first, I want to thank everybody um, from the Saginaw County Hall of Fame for putting on a great event. Um, you know, you put together one of the best classes ever. Um, one of the best classes ever. I think this class that you guys put together can compete with, <laughs> you think about the athletes that's in this class and the team, the football team, the Saginaw High football team, uh, a ton of those guys had uh, two sports, three sports, three sports athletes, um, and Sue could be our coach, so. You guys put together a, a, a great class. Um, a lot of those guys at, this, at, on, at Saginaw High, um, um, guys that I've, I've known, I've grown to know um, over time, grown to, um, you know, became friends with some of these guys. Um, I was never able to see those guys uh, play in high school um, because my mom was so BV. Everything was BV. You know, like, um, <laughs> I, I couldn't leave that neighborhood at all. Uh, I couldn't leave that neighborhood at all. So it was, I remember thinking about going into another school and we kind of flirted with it a little bit. Um, Coach Kelly's back there and I know he was my, uh, he was my a, one of my AAU coaches when I was younger. Um, I thought about going to a different school. She shut it down real quick. She shut it down real quick. Um, it was just something about, something about her. She was very, very special. Um, something about Saginaw, man. You hear the first two talk about it, how it's such a, you know, it's such a competitive city. Uh, so many talented athletes. Um, Terrence, um, a guy that went to Buena Vista, who I thought was, uh, I thought he was a myth, man. I thought this guy, I, I, hearing the stories about him, the talent um, that he that he showed, man, I thought this guy wasn't, I thought he wasn't real. I, I so it was crazy to hear things like that. Um, it was other guys that you know we haven't even heard about, or guys may not even know about, like Chester Searles and all those guys. Sam Morrell, um, Buena Vista put together um, some great classes. My brother um, Sean Jackson back there, who was a point guard, um, he was better than me, honestly. But um, I think I was a little bit more gifted on the office. If I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but but it was just something about it was just something about you know this city, man, and. It, seeing those guys, hearing the stories, um, even when I got older, to see some of the guys playing the men's league, um, they were special, and it, it gave me something to to go after. It gave me something to chase. And when I, and again, when you're a Saginaw athlete, if you have something to chase, some kind of motivation, you're gonna you're determined to accomplish that goal. Um, chasing, you know, the, the records of you know Terrence and them winning championships. Um, the guys, Mark Macon, um, who was a scoring a beast on the scoring machine. Um, I wanted to break those records. I wanted to break those records, but I also wanted to do it the right way. I wanted to win. Um, I wanted to be a good teammate. Uh, um, some of my teammates, a lot of my teammates, teammates um, called and reached out, um, and they couldn't make it. Um, some of them are, you know, out of town and stuff like that. But um, I just remember reminiscing about the stories, the battles. Um, I remember <laughs> Coach Schaefer was my high school coach. Um, I gotta ask. I gotta ask for forgiveness for him, man, because I know we bumped heads a lot. It was just my, my competitive nature. I wanted to win. I, I wanted to do something so bad. I wanted to accomplish so many different goals. And um, he was so old school, man. He was so old school. He he, he was uh, he was no rain Reed, the the second one, the junior. He was the second one. So and uh, Coach Reed was a, a legend. Coach Reed was a legend, but. 
And I think um, it's something I'm learning while I'm coaching now. You have to adjust uh, to your to your uh, your players. Uh, over time, Coach Schaefer ended up adjusting, and um, I'm just super thankful for a guy like that. Co coach Ferris, another coach that was up there that was speaking, um, he's been he's he was a, a, a big reason um, why I became a, a scoring beast by just showing me just simple stuff, the step back. My, the spin was my favorite move. As you see in all the videos, I probably spin a million times. Um, the spin move was my favorite move to finish with, and it was just something he used to just show me just to, to get by people and, and finish over in, in traffic. So um, I want to thank guys like that. Um, uh, thank you to like uh, Coach Bray, my coaching staff down at Notre Dame. Again, it's, it's tough. I think Tim Crawford's still around. Um, to, to, yeah, Tim's back there. To, to be an athlete coming from Saginaw, Notre Dame's probably the last school um, that you would think an athlete from here would, you know, to, to, they were offering a scholarship to a, a black kid who, in an in a urban neighborhood, in a rough neighborhood, they would think, oh, no, nah, we got to stay away from that. But, man, my coaching staff, they came. They came, and they came in the hood where I was. I grew up in BV, but my sister grew up on the south side. I remember nights them just coming over eating fried chicken, doing it was crazy. Like it was crazy, and that, and and that's why you know it was easy for me to commit to that school, man. It was just I, I'm forever grateful for you know Coach Bray, man. I can sit up here and cry all day, and, and talk to you about the many things that he put me through. Um, it was one time he backdoored me one time, called my mom during freshman year because I was it was a culture shock going in for going in there freshman summer, and. Um, I'm like, yo, I, I came. I want to. I want to go home. I want to go home. He called my mom, and I didn't know about it until after I graduated. But he called my mom, and she was like, "You better take basketball away from him. Mama, take my son." And little did you know, she took. He took basketball away from me for like two weeks um, because my grades were bad. I think it took me probably within that two weeks. I probably had like a 3.0. I'm like, yo, I'm like, I, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go home and face the wrath my mom was gonna get. <laughs> so I think that's why I avoided it that much, but. Me and him became, like, we, we became so close, man. He's a point guard. He was a point guard and, and when he played, and that was, I was the extension to him on the court. So I'm forever grateful for uh, Coach Bray. Um, and then my family, man, um, I have my brothers here. If anybody that know, don't, don't know about me or don't know about the Jackson clan, anybody in Saginaw can tell you, it's, we everywhere. It's, I'm the 13 of 14 children, all by the same mom and dad. All by the same mom and dad. I got five of my brothers back there. Um, they, 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 they the reason why. Um, they are the reason why. I'm towards the end. I have my little brother that's back there as well. Um, I had nobody else to beat up on. He was the only one. But, <laughs> um, but I had other brothers above me that beat up on me. That just on the court. If I really wanted to win, if I really wanted to score, I had to go through some monsters, man. I had to go through some monsters. And it was just, it was like playing a video game and you just keep losing on the same level. Like, so it was, it was crazy to go against, go against those guys and the battle against those guys. Even my sister, man, my sister was so gifted um, playing against her for a long time. It was, it was just crazy. I had to prove myself at a young age and, and because, because of that, um, I became who I was on the court, but I also became who I was off the court um, because of my family. They kept me level-headed. They kept me humble. Um, they they reminded me each day if I got out of line. My mom didn't have to whip me as much because I had to face them. So <laughs> it was tough to you know it was tough to run away from that. I remember my brother Anthony getting into me one time, just beat me up a couple. It was just tough. I had to fight my brother Corey plenty of times. Like. <laughs> So it was just tough to deal with that, man, growing up, but it made me who I was. Um, a big, big thank you to, so my mom and dad, my mom passed, and this is why I was afraid to speak because um, um, the, my biggest motivation, my, um, the reason why I did everything was because my mom and dad, my, my mom passed when I graduated from college in 2010, and she was my, she was the reason why. She was the passion that I had for the game. She was, she was my biggest support system. She was my fan. She, she never criticized my game. She never did anything that, that you know, made me feel low at all. If I had a bad day or even if I was wrong, she was there to just tell me it's gonna be all right, honey. It's gonna be all right. Like, so to lose my mom in, in 2010, it took a big toll on me. Uh, and I, I didn't want to do anything. 
Um, I didn't want to do anything for a long time. I didn't want to play basketball. I didn't want to be around people. Um, it was just a lot to deal with. And um, I could just remember um, her in a, in a video. She always reminded my family. She was so in the church. She always reminded us, without God, we're nothing. Um, she, and, and because of that, that's, that's something I held on to. And she was, you know, that motivation, I kind of got, got things back going and got back to playing basketball again. After that, I sat out a year and just remembered some things she said to me and then went and played, played well in the D League. Um, but I still didn't have that support that I felt like that was, she was my biggest support. And um, she was the reason why I felt like um, I kept going, you know, I kept going. So I was trying to find myself for years. Um, I was, my, my family don't even know, I was just depressed. I was depressed. I just held it in. Every time I, I went through something, I held it in. And I, and I hated, you know, I hated just being around the game for a while. I would play. I would go play in the pickup league. And, and I hate playing in it now, man. Guys that know you go play in the pickup league, they like, yo, oh, you ain't in the league, so I don't even know why you out here killing. Nah, <laughs> like, nah, I wanted to just do it for fun. And, and they, it was just like, you know, I had to hear that coming from them. So it was a little frustrating at times. And, you know, my dad was still around, and my dad was he, was, he was the guy that criticized my game, but he was also uh, the guy that I knew I could lean on, you know, for, for that advice. Again, he raised 11 boys and three girls. Um, he, did, he did everything. He went to work. My mom really didn't have to do anything. Um, my dad was the one that provided for everything, so when I needed that advice, I could always go to him. And um, when I was trying to find myself, um, whether it was you know going to play again or whatever it was, I remember just talking to him, sitting and talking to him, and um, I, I started. I began like working with kids, started working in the juvenile, and then um, I'm doing what I'm doing now. I run a 21 and under um, fatherhood program throughout Saginaw County um, because of my mom, who she was. She gave back to the community. She was the community mom. If anybody in BV needed anything, she was there. Um, and my dad just reminded me that do what you do what you love to do, um, do what you love doing, uh, whether it was giving back to the kids or coaching. I love basketball, and I and I, I knew I didn't want to play again. So the only way to get back and, and to still you know be involved in the game was to coach. Now I became a coach, and um, and my dad was my biggest support man. Again, he was he was there. He was there to with him going and dealing with his cancer, to see him fight through all that man. I was just you know that that was my motivation man. And when my dad passed away last year, again, I just felt like the world came crashing down. But this time I had my family. This time I had my family, and I'm super thankful for them. I remember we all fell out, but to think about how close we are now, man, and they don't understand how, how, how grateful for I am being like towards the end and, and having those guys above me to, to you know, love me man to to have that you know that that support when things like this happen when when you know you lose a loved one i'm i'm forever grateful for you guys and um again i'm i'm honored to be a part of this um this ain't for me this is for the guys that you know supported me the coaches um the family members my teammates my friends um, my family like you guys this is for you guys um and i want to show my daughter um, exactly what you guys show me, exactly how dad loved me. I want to love my daughter the same way and, and so she will feel that love and so she can go on and just be as happy as I was, man. So I want you guys to you know, know that I love you guys and I appreciate you guys man, so much. Thank you.